I was looking at an Economist cover the other day, the Econ Economist magazine, and it said, 20 million p people saved by COVID vaccine. And I thought, yeah, you bastards, for every, mil for every million persons that you saved with the lockdowns and the whole vaccination, uh, uh, not the vaccination, but the pandemic panic, you're probably gonna kill 50 because of supply, dis supply chain disruptions and postponed starvation. And so, you know, that's part of the problem with turning political decisions over to the medical experts is that, well, we save, we save some people with the left hand and we doom 100 more with the right hand. And, 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 that, and there, there is a lag. We, tr we basically tried to shut down the world's economy for two years as if we could do that because, well, look, everything's so plentiful, isn't it? Doesn't it matter at all that people aren't gonna go to work? And it turns out that it actually matters a lot. Okay, well, let's, let's, turn, let's turn to the WEF and let's turn to the global utopists and to what happened in Canada. The Canadian truckers here, they were pushing back against what they regarded as unwarranted government overreach and intrusion into their private lives on the COVID front fundamentally. And I was a supporter of the truckers right from day one. I believe like you do that truckers and farmers and the men, particularly the men and the women who work on those frontline occupations have a pragmatic wisdom that the intellectual types often don't. And I've also noted too that the intellectual socialist types really like the working class in principle, but they actually don't like the working class as such because they tend not to hold the same utopian intellectual views that the globalists do. And so we saw that in spades in Canada. And I've seen my government take a turn for the worse on multiple dimensions in Canada that's jaw dropping in its continuity and depth. And it's clearly the case that Canadians haven't woken up to that yet, although perhaps they're starting to. And a huge part of that is this appalling and unconscionable media collusion. And so now we see something similar happening in Europe, particularly in the Netherlands. And we should let everyone know, and you have to listen to this, this is so important, you know, the Netherlands is the world's second biggest exporter of agricultural products. This little tiny postage stamp of a country that was scraped out of the ocean has managed to put itself together so that it can not only feed itself, but so that it's a major agricultural supplier worldwide. It's a phenomenal accomplishment. We should be so happy with the Dutch farmers that we can hardly stand ourselves. And instead, the courts in particular have mandated that the farmers be scuttled. And the government, their own government, has basically come out right out and said, well, because you guys pollute so much, um, we have to crack down on you, as well as reducing the speed limits of our cars, which is another appalling move. And we, we're, we're sorry, but a lot of you are going to have to go out of business, but you know, that's, to make an omelet, a few eggs have to be broken. And as the president of Greenpeace in the Netherlands said recently, well, we know we're not going to combat climate change, the climate change emergency without inconveniencing a few people. And now there's what, 40,000 truckers in the Netherlands who are up in arms. And I believe 100,000 people have protested in Spain. And this is spreading into Germany and into the fishermen in the Netherlands as well, who are also being pressured by these utopian types. Okay, let's talk about this global famine, man, because I, I see that coming in in the fall in a big way. And so my sense is, well, partly because of the Ukraine conflict and the fact that we're wiping out a big chunk of the world's wheat supply and fertilizer supply, that we're gonna be putting about 150 million people under intense food pressure, really starting this fall. I think that's when it's gonna kick in. And my sense is, well, there's no way that can happen without mass migration pressure on Europe, maybe of a scale that makes the last migration crisis look like virtually nothing. So my sense was that on the pandemic front, that because we disrupted the supply chains, and we, we have by no means fixed that in the least. There's a shortage. You can't get a car in Canada. You can't get a motorbike. You can't get a, a personal watercraft. You can't get paper and cardboard for books. There's a, there's a massive a backlog and lineup for everything. I know that one container ship in five is now snared at a port. And so I know what happens when you put pressure on the supply chain the people who suffer for that the most are the people at the bottom of the economic hierarchy. And so those are gonna be people that are barely hanging on in developing countries, especially in North Africa. That would be my guess where this is gonna affect, this is gonna have the biggest effects. 
And so, you know, if you show a 1% increase in unemployment, you get a 5% increase in psychiatric hospitalization. And that's because there's a lot of people who are just barely making ends meet. And then if you double the cost of necessities like energy or let's say fertilizer, or we could even put in food, uh, then you're gonna produce a, a tremendous amount of economic pressure on these people. Uh, tilt them into starvation. And so and we've seen what's happened in Sri Lanka, which is just an absolute bloody major, significant ongoing catastrophe. 21 million people in Sri Lanka. There's no way we're going to be able to feed them in any real sense for any long period of time. So uh, all that eco movement forward on the Sri Lankan front is going to ensure that those poor starving people are going to eat every goddamn animal on that in that entire country to stave off starvation. And then they're going to burn everything for fuel because what the hell else are they going to do? So this idea that we can make people poor, hungry, cold or hot by scaling back food production and disrupting energy supplies and that's somehow going to save the planet is as backwards a conception as any dimwit could possibly formulate.